Being a coach is likely the hardest and yet most rewarding profession in the world. It's hard because everything you do, everything you say, how you act, how you respond to adversity, everything you do has an effect on the young men that you mentor. Consequently, you have to be at your best at all times. And I tell you, this is extremely difficult. Trust me. Having commanded all the nation's special operations forces, I know what a burden it is to be constantly, constantly scrutinized. But it is also incredibly rewarding when you do the right thing. When you see the young boys you coached become men, raise families, be successful citizens, and go on to make a difference in other people's lives, you know you had a part in that. I often tell the story of when I was running track in high school. I was attempting to break the school record in the mile. The week before, I had come close but fallen just a little bit short. It was the final race of the season, my senior year, and candidly, I didn't think I had it in me to close the gap and break the record. The night before the race, I received a call from a former football coach at Roosevelt High School, Coach Jerry Turnbow. I was stunned. I didn't even know the coach knew who I was. I sat the bench for two years on the football team before deciding to go into track. The coach had departed Roosevelt 18 months earlier for another football coaching job across town. The coach called me. He told me that he knew I was running my last race. He knew it was my last chance to break the school record, and he told me I could do it. All I needed to do was to run my hardest, give it everything I had. The next evening, I broke the school record. No one cared but me, but breaking that record changed my life. It gave me the confidence that I could do anything I set my mind to. And four years later, I became a Navy SEAL. In the course of my 37 years, I have likely affected the lives of tens of thousands of men and women. I only had this opportunity because a football coach took the time to call me and give me a few words of encouragement. The two-minute message preview at the non-denominational New Hope Olympia is good coaches do make a difference. Most family dynasties don't last beyond the third generation in the business. But the Ford family's fifth generation, the great-great-grandchildren of Ford Motor founder Henry Ford, now are among the company's ranks, according to the Wall Street Journal. This means that five generations of Ford have been involved in that business. And it all started with Henry 114 years ago in 1903. His family is still involved over a century later because each generation invested in the next generation. You may not have inherited a business, but maybe you have received some family heirloom. Perhaps you inherited a special possession with a financial or sentimental value passed down from generation to generation. Some of you may have intentions of passing down something special to your children or grandchildren. There is nothing wrong with handing down material possessions. But understand this, one day, those material possessions will pass away. Jesus warned us not to store material goods that would rust and rot. He encouraged us to store up treasures in heaven. And I hope that you are doing just that. Henry Ford was both in the automobile and the coaching business. Each generation coached the next generation. But I want you to understand that we can leave behind something special. Each of us should leave behind a legacy of faith. To do this, we must live our lives investing in others. We have this opportunity, but it is also our responsibility. How can we leave behind such a legacy? This process involves evangelism and discipleship. In his weekend message, Pastor Dell will share seven principles that Paul used in coaching his son in the ministry, Timothy. As you watch this weekend's message, you are being coached by the Apostle Paul. Are you coachable? Who's coaching you? Whom are you coaching? Good coaching does make a difference.